the board has decided that Dr. Buttar's treatments of patient A, B, and C constitute unprofessional conduct, including but not limited to departure from or failure to conform to the standards of acceptable and prevailing medical practice or the ethics of the medical profession, irrespective of whether a patient is injured, thereby within the meaning of the North Carolina General Statute 90-14A6, and grounds exist under that section of the North Carolina General Statute for the board to annul, suspend, revoke, or limit his license to practice medicine and surgery issued by the board or deny the application he might make in the future. The medical board has already determined and even their own expert admitted that no harm to the patient was done. They are trying to railroad this philosophy, this type of medicine out of North Carolina. So the best thing that they can try to do is try to take me out. Why did they pick on me? Because I've been one, the loudest, the most outspoken about it. I'm the president of the North Carolina Integrative Medical Society. I've testified against the medical board in front of the North Carolina legislature. I've told the North Carolina legislature that they needed to put this rabid dog down and this rabid dog now has made the mistake of biting me and I am going to make sure that this dog is going to be put down now. Dr. Buttar's conduct in regard to patient A, B, C constitutes Dr. Buttar providing services to a patient in such a manner as to exploit the patient within the meaning of North Carolina General Statute 90-14A12 and grounds exist under that section of the North Carolina General Statute for the board to annul, suspend, revoke, or limit his license to practice medicine and surgery uh, issued by the board or deny any application he might make in the future. Upon finding of the exploitation, the board may order restitution be made to the payer of the bill, whether the patient or insurer by the physician, provided the determination of the amount of restitution shall be based on credible testimony in the record. They had no credible testimony in the record in the first place. They had an oncologist, the one person who says that he reviewed the chart, 1,000 pages in two hours, who has no understanding or, un or, or information on integrative medicine whatsoever. Their own expert witness tried to, and this is in the testimony on his deposition, tried to deny the fact that cancer was an obligate glucose metabolizer. And when it was brought to his attention that that is actually what a PET scan does, it picks up radio labeled, radioisotope labeled um, uh, glucose because cancer picks up that glucose because it's feeding on it, denied that. He said that's not glucose. This is, this person has he contradicted himself so many times. He's not a credible witness. And then you talk to uh, people that, weren't, that have never been to the clinic, like the wife of one of the patients who's never been here in 13 weeks of treatment, or a nephew who I don't even know has ever been to the state of North Carolina, who, again, makes statements that his aunt told him X, Y, and Z, despite his aunt, and you can read this in the testimony, despite his aunt giving me an antique dictionary, of medical dictionary that was over 100 years old as a gift, wit inscribed by her, um, and, the, and the person that was accompanying the patient um, on, on a daily basis, the fiancé of the patient, said that the family was opposed to the patient's uh, decision to seek this type of treatment. This all comes down to the patient's right. The patient decides what they want, not the medical board, not the family members. I don't have any obligation to any family member when the patient comes to me. My agreement is between the patient and me. And if the patient dies, then the family comes back and tries to re renege what the patient themselves wanted what they desired, that's not how it works. I am obligated to the patient. The patient has to be obligated to me to make sure they do what I'm asking them to do.